Hello and welcome to another karting video. This is going to be a little bit different as I'm back racing in the Club 100 Sprint Championship whilst the Experience Championship is on a summer break for a few months. The sprint races uh, don't have qualifying so your grid positions in the heats are drawn at random. It's done so they balance out across the three heats that you have. Um, I race sprints in my very first season of Club 100 but as a novice so I was starting towards the back of the grid. Uh, this time for my first sprint heat I'd actually be starting on my first ever pole position which will be quite an experience. Um, well at Rye House I raced, uh, well I've raced with Rye House a few times but I raced last year in the Sprint 60 Championship and at the time I thought I'd probably not go back didn't really enjoy it very much. Uh, the track surface was generally quite poor, quite bumpy, and just looked like it needed a decent amount of work on it. Over the winter, the entire track was resurfaced and some of the curbs reprofiled. So I actually decided, you know, I'd give it a go and come back and try it out and see how we got on. Okay, so here we go, starting heat three from pole position. Uh, the pace car just taking its round through the last sequence of corners before the start. Um, you see we're running at a relatively sensible slow pace to back the entire field up. Right, the pace car driver's just given me a thumbs up, so we are good to start. So as soon as he pulls off the track, I'm going to become the pace setter through the final corner. Coming up to the grid, he's going to pull off now to the right. So I just decided to go straight away. I think I'm probably supposed to go on the yellow, but never mind. Right, even though I'm the first, uh, you know, I, I set off, I set the pace, I'm completely mugged by about five, six carts, probably just due to the weight or the cart being 100%. Down to the hairpin for the first time through there cleanly, that's not too bad. Um, I've just not you know, put that out of my head to start. There's nothing I can do about it really. I'll just try and focus on going forward. So we're coming to the uh, pylon bend. That's one of the curves that was reprofiled. And I go a bit deep, which isn't ideal. And you can see Anwar just comes up around the outside of me, nice and easy for him. So lap one, done too bad but my pace out of the final corner is not great and another car slips down the inside of me again that's a heavyweight driver he's a hell of a lot lighter than me um, so maybe you know not worth getting too upset about at this point back down to the hairpin I don't bother defending at all and a couple of carts get past but this guy he ran the outside goes a bit wide and says hello to the tyre barrier um, probably not very nice for him but still Right, it's quite fast and furious. Round right house, here we go, pile on again. I can make a complete mess out of that. Um, that's really quite poor. Um, but two quite eventful laps uh, into the race. Um, again, just need to kind of try and concentrate and just stabilize my pace a bit. Someone again down the inside of me, it's another heavyweight, much faster out of the final corner than me back <coughs> down to the hairpin the yellow flag here that's just because there's someone putting the tires back to where they should be after the contact on the previous lap um, back through the hairpins not exactly great um, back to pylon and pylon off oh, and again through the sequence of bends and pylon I'm way too deep lose a bit of time there and now back to the main straight again um, that whole sequence of bends in fact the last sort of sector of the, the lap was just generally messy for me the entire entire set of heats and the, the C final and that really hurt my lap time and, and generally made me a bit of a sitting duck um, down the main straight but anyway we've 
seem to have at least stabilised for a bit now, back through the hairpins. Um, I mean, the guys in front aren't, aren't vanishing exactly, but neither am I managing to close back up on them. Do we have a better job? No. Way wide again, and someone's just said thank you very much. In fact, not just someone, two carts have said thanks a lot and driven just effectively straight past me. Uh, not good. I mean, I think at this point, um, I, I'm, I'm just a bit, I'm just a bit punch drunk, punch drunk to be honest. We're half, about halfway through the race, um, and I've been, you know, not driving very clean. I've been overtaken by, well, obviously, almost half the field at <coughs> the first corner. Excuse me, from pole position, and I think, I think my head's just a bit not quite where it needs to be, but still. You know, just need to try and um, just get some rhythm and at least try and stabilise my position. You know, I don't think, obviously I'm not going to catch the guys in front up there a little quicker than me, but you know, at least stabilise, but we have another car come through now on the inside. Again, I was kind of held up coming out of pylon. That car in front of me is a little bit of contact, slowed me down, and then really just my poor exit out of the final corner, then makes it really quite easy for people just to drive past me and another poor hairpin and this guy's just taking advantage of work as well um, I mean some of them you know some of the a lot of these guys are potentially heavyweights um, they could have a significant weight advantage on me um, that's not an excuse because there are drivers who are you know, super heavies uh, maybe similar racing weight to myself who are quicker and you know could do a better job of defending at that point so it's not entirely the weight but it doesn't it doesn't help um, you know if someone's coming up behind you particularly out of a slow corner onto a straight and they're carrying less mass they are naturally going to accelerate much quicker that I'm afraid is physics right so through happy two um, again this this guy's not not vanishing um, particularly, but you know, neither am I getting back on him and probably not going to do. Yeah, you can see immediately because of the, the poor line I take through that pylon complex, he's immediately pulled you know, a little more distance on me and then he's going to pull a bit more down the straight. Now, again, that could just be down to relative performance of the car and or you know, the driver car combination in relation to the weight, but clearly doesn't help on a relatively small tight track like this one. Right, not long to go now that the heats are 10 laps long. Uh, they're timed, not a number of laps, but you know that's basically how uh, how it works out, about 10 laps. So we've got a few more laps to go. Um, yeah, well, at least we've, we've managed to dip back into the 45s, but the frustrating thing is you know, I did a 45-6 on lap three, and then I did a succession of 46s on following laps, and then finally managed to get back into the 45s by lap seven. Um, again, that's not that's not helpful. So, lap nine, I believe this is the penultimate lap. Do we have anyone around us? Can't see anyone at the moment. See, so, no, nope, there is a car behind us, right? So we're coming into the final lap, and there's a car behind us. So can we manage to keep him behind, right? Again, not exactly ideal. Set so corners there, onto the final corner. Take it a bit wider. That's not too bad. That's reasonably okay. Um, have a bit of a duck to try and eke out like, the smallest amount of aerodynamic advantage I can coming down to the first hairpin for the final time this time I actually make, take the sensible approach and kind of go to the middle of the track hopefully to convince the guy behind that you know, he's, he's not there's no there's no space for him to come down the inside so you know he should keep well clear now we just need to keep it reasonably tidy on the way out of here and we should be okay um, coming to the final corner and we're 
coming up to the line. That was quite an experience. My first start from pole position, um, I wasn't expecting it to be as aggressive as it was. It was quite an experience, but at least I've done it now, so next time be a bit less worrying. Right, on to the next heat, heat seven. This time I'm starting sixth on the grid. So kind of middle of the pack, uh, warming the tyres up, getting ready for the start. Coming through the final corner. Yep, thumbs up from the pace cart driver, so we're gonna get ready to go. Keep as tight to this guy in front as I can. Wait for the pole sitter to go, and then we need to go as well. And he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting, and he's gone, right. So, off we go. Reasonably even start, not too bad. You can see I lost a few lengths there, and I think there's a car coming around the inside of me, but it's not too bad. Coming down to the hairpin for the first time. This time I stick to the inside, defend my position, and reasonably nicely done. There's a massive concertina effect here. This guy, uh, the guy on the outside, almost hits the tyres, he pulls across, and he basically takes the entire pack of carts with him. Um, and the carts in front there are first and second. I am now third. I'll repeat that. I am in third place in a heat in Club 100, but it's only the first lap, unfortunately. So I come out of the final corner on the main straight. I really overcook that, too worried about the fact that I'm in third place, I think, and there we go, I'm now in, I think, fifth or something. Um, but still, I was third, now I'm sixth, never mind, don't care, I was third at one point, on merit, on the track. Um, right, down to the hairpin again. I'm trying to take my normal line, there's no one behind me, that's alright, there's somebody there yet, somebody there. Right, hairpin two. Again, not too bad. I mean, if only I could just stay with these guys, you know, just 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 keep keep, keep this gap, it would be good. But again, my nemesis through the pylon sequence of corners, I go far too deep. Um, this guy's now overtaken me and down the straight, and I, again, I'm a sitting duck. Look at this guy on the inside. He's closing, 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 and there's two of them. Now, you could argue, well, you could have shut the door, you could have moved across early. I could have done, but I think it would just delay the inevitable. Um, you know, whether it's a combination of poor exit speed or just the you know, fact I'm carrying a bit more ballast than they are, I don't know. But anyway, so head down. We're about sixth or seventh now, I think. Um, the main thing is to get a good series of consistent laps um, you know it's quite a short track so even the field spread here can be quite large after a few laps right so the, that was the guy that I started behind and he's only just got past me at the start of lap four and I'm already into the 45s as well which is you know better than the previous heat in terms of hopefully I can you know, maintain that. Another horrendous interpretation of driving through the pylon sequence. Uh, yeah, terrible. And you can see there's a car behind me, back onto the main straight again. And I suspect he's probably going to come past me on the inside. Yeah, look, I've checked, he's there. I'm not going to fight it, there's no point, really. Um, it would probably slow both of us down. But the good thing is that's that's two that's two laps in the 45, so more consistent than I was um, in heat, the first heat. That's a bit wide coming at here, too, it's not ideal. Um, right, down to pylon, what do we do? That's much better. So I stayed wider, stayed more to the left, actually under the pylon itself, and didn't make the uh, right-hander as steep for me, as, as narrow for me, so I actually managed to carry more speed. Um, and probably got a better exit out of the final corner as well. So we've now had three laps in the 45s. Now, I really need to take a second or so off that, a second and a bit. That would be, that would put me kind of much more pack 
which is fine as a super heavyweight that kind of pace would be good I'm not going to get into the 43s like somebody like Joe Holmes Joe is considerably lighter than me um, I'm not entirely sure if he carries ballast to make it up to the heavyweight limit um, but he is a lot lighter than me so he has got a bit of advantage and maybe he's a little bit better at the drive but still you know um, taking a second off this second and a bit um, would help a little bit slower there right so Stuart Kirk's just come past me Stuart is a fellow super heavyweight um, I'm not entirely sure where he started probably towards the back of the grid I'm guessing um, so he's worked his way up or I've worked my way back whichever way you want to look at it um, you know can I hang on to the back of Stuart or not that would be uh, that would be good um, we're already on to lap seven I mean, these races are quick um, you know there's not a lot of time if you make a mistake you're kind of you know you don't have a lot of time to really recover from it so back onto lap onto lap eight we've now got three laps to go um, i mean the main thing now is just just really try and stabilize my position hang on hang on to stewart um, and try and not lose any more positions if I can avoid it. I mean, there are, I think, three, possibly three or four super heavyweights in this race. Um, would have been nice to have stayed in front of Stewart because that would have probably become second of the super heavyweights. But, you know, I, as I mentioned, the consistency is the problem, really. Um, I mean, yes, I would like a bit more ultimate pace, but um, managing to actually nail the line through pylon and the last corner consistently would, would make a big difference you know going through stadium this first sequence of Ben's hairpin one and hairpin two actually don't seem to be too bad um, it, it's that last really is that final sector of the lap I'm losing most of my time Let's see, do I manage it? Uh, it's okay. It's not good, it's not bad. Um, but you can see immediately, Stuart gets a much, much better exit out of the final corner than I do, and he's he's pulled away just in that one corner. Um, and again, you know, my lap times against myself here are not too inconsistent, which is quite good, but they consistently not quite fast enough and just visually I'm fairly convinced that it's that final sector is where I'm losing most of my time um, if I could do a better job of that I think I'd be um, overly not too you know not exactly uncompetitive which is good given the fact that Rye is such a small track such a short track um, it, it's it's not too bad so, final lap complete, and actually that's the fastest lap of that race on final lap 45.4. Um, not too bad. On to my final heat, heat 9, uh, this time starting 10th. So I really need to hold on to my position and possibly move forwards if I can. You know, I, I don't want to be stuck in 10th. I'm also in 10th, very exposed to the C3, the novice runners behind me. I mean, some of whom could still be quite quick. Let's not think that just because they're novices, they're slow. So coming up to the start, let's see how this pans out. Pretty even start, not too bad. Um, I'm kind of stuck on the outside a bit, but I'm deciding to stay there. So I've lost a place or couple of places on the start yeah someone's come on the outside of me through there down to the hairpin I stick to the inside and that's that's not worked out too badly except this guy on the outside for whatever reason decides that he's going to stick around the outside of me rubbing onto the car even though he can't because fundamentally the gap is going to close you know, the, those tyres are there um, and if I'm there you can't go anywhere um, but that really slowed me down coming out of hairpin one and then 
bunch of carts here that the guy in the yellow and the guy in the red got past me because I was hooked up and slow out of here in one. If I'd been taking my normal line, normal speed, they wouldn't have got past me. Um, so I'm getting a little bit impatient at this point, really. Um, I've lost a bunch of places. You know, I want to get a reasonable finish um, to hopefully help with my place when it comes to the finals. And I can see these guys aren't, aren't fast. A little bit of contact there, but not a great deal I could do about it. Neither of these guys look super quick. So, you know, there should be an opportunity for me to uh, hopefully get past them. You know, even though it is quite difficult to pass here at Bright House, you know, I still think I've got a bit of a pace advantage here. So, um, out the final corner. Yeah, they're not, they're not streaking away. I mean, okay, I'm not really catching them, but again, talked about. Um, I mean that wide line through the stadium really doesn't work. You want to be hugging the curb as much as you can. Um, so I decided to take a dive down the inside. To be fair that gap was always closing. Um, I was never alongside him so it definitely wasn't my corner. Um, you know I was relying on him to let let me have the corner. It was a bit of a huge thing. Um, you know, he needed to back out and he didn't. Um, totally my fault. I got a penalty for it. Quite rightly, you can't argue any other way. Um, you know, I was basically relying on the goodwill of the driver. I was trying to overtake, you know, to not take his line into the corner, which was his right. So, yeah, but unfortunately, that is a takeout. That's a six place grid penalty. Um, and I've lost a bunch of time on that lap as well. So really, I've, I've, you know, through being impatient, I've, I've created that problem for myself. Um, if I'd been more patient, I'm sure I could have overtaken both of those carts, and I probably wouldn't have been overtaken by this guy here either, because I would have been further down the road. So, yeah, frustrating, um, and it has a bit of a snowball effect, um, as we'll see in the C final. But anyway, I'll need to, you know, just concentrate on trying to pull, pull up to these two guys. I've already, previous lap, I've already seen the penalty. I know that, you know, it's fair cop. I know, I know, I'm, I know I'm in for it at this point. Um, just need to try and gain as many places as I can to try and at least, you know, offset the fact I'm getting a sixth place penalty for that ridiculous move down at Airbnb 1. Um, so the good thing is these guys aren't streaking away, again probably the pace is a bit more evenly matched, um, you know just need to get some consistent laps in, close the gap up and then try and look for a suitable opportunity to overtake rather than a massively optimistic um, lunge. Uh, down the inside of someone into the hairpin. Yeah, so this this guy, you know, he's definitely slower than me. Um, I just need to engineer a suitable, sensible, safe opportunity to get past him if I can. So he's catching the guy in front, well that's good because hopefully the guy in front will slow him up a bit, um, you know, not make it easier for him to pass and then that gives me the opportunity to close up with both of them but hopefully this time not um, do something stupid. So coming down to the hairpin, he's definitely getting closer and I'd say I'm definitely stronger on the brakes than he is. So an opportunity. Um, yeah, the gaps, the gaps coming down. The guy, the guy in front in the yellow suit is definitely slower than both of us. Um, you see, now they are literally they are now holding each other up um, through this sequence of bends back out to the main straight. Um, what I need is for you know these two to, to literally hold their station for a bit until I can close the gap up. But no, the guy in the yellow seat takes a, I don't know what that line is through stadium, unbelievably wide and the guy 
in the white helmet just just drive straight past him. A bit frustrating from my point of view. Um, but you know, just got to try and take advantage. He's fighting back. Whoa! Um, that wasn't a bad move. Um, can I hang it round all the way around the outside? No. Um, I mean, I possibly could. Maybe I should have just stuck it out around the outside and then braked late and deep into the second part of the stadium to try and block pass. But again, that's kind of reliant on the guy I'm overtaking being kind to me. And we've seen how that's worked out already. Again, gun yellow suit, unbelievably wide. It's almost like in another county at that point. Um, but he cuts back across. Back down to the hairpin. I mean, we're on lap nine now, so if I'm going to do it, I need to do it fairly soon. Guy in white isn't getting away. Do we have an opportunity? Right, coming into pylon. And remembering the uh, fantastic overtaking section from Nicky Richardson's instructional video. Uh, just went down the inside at that second part of pylon. I mean, the, the guy in the yellow was taking their natural line. You want to go wide and cut back, but obviously that leaves a massive gap on the inside. Um, as long as you can break and make the apex, you've kind of got the move done at that point. There's not a lot you can do to come back from it. Final lap. Um, can I do anything about this guy in front? I don't think so. He's a bit too far in front of me. Um, fundamentally, you know, I created all of my own problems in this race. Um, I should have finished uh, maybe seventh or eighth. Um, could even have been even higher than that. But penalty, yeah, really, that was that was the issue there, and that was, that was my fault, entirely my fault. But frustrating nonetheless. So we take the checkered. Yeah, that would have been this would have been eighth, even without penalty. But I think I could have finished finished higher. Maybe as high as fifth or sixth, which would be a really good result. So that's it for the heats. We're now on to the C final, where I'm starting in sixth place, uh, mostly because of that final heat and the penalty. Um, you know, as I said, I could maybe have finished fifth in that in heat nine, which might have squeezed me to the end of the B final, which would have been brilliant. Uh, would, would have been so happy with that. Uh, but or maybe in the front couple of rows of the C. Right. So we start. I don't get a great start, uh, there's a bit of a gap there, um, someone's going to come through on the inside, uh, come across to make sure no one else comes through on the inside, um, I'm going to have to go defensive now down into the hairpin potentially, otherwise I'm going to get overtaken, and I go deep, and that really, yeah, three carts I think got past to that point, that was, that was terrible, and having, frustrating, having driven driven hairpin quite well up till that point. It was just really frustrating to have um, messed it up at that point. So I'm really on the back foot now. I've I'm, I'm, you know, dropped quite a long way back from where I started. Um, you know, and, and not that I had any expectation of progressing, to be honest, at the C final as you need to finish. There's only one, uh, I think it's probably top three or something to progress. Um, so I, you know, I needed a bit of luck, or I needed to be uh, closer to the front, as I said, within the you know, first couple of rows or something. Um, and heat nine really screwed that for me. And yeah, I'm just getting, uh, I think, just again making mistakes. Scrappy, it's not, it's not tidy. Um, and, and the C finals are a longer race, it's like a 15 minute, I think 15 minute race, I don't know, 10 minutes, I can't remember, but it's about a 15 lap race, I think, 15, 16 lap race around here. So there's, there's time if you don't have a huge gap in front. But as we'll see, it doesn't work out that way. So coming down to hairpin one on lap three. There's a spinner in front. I do my best to avoid it, but I run out of road. And I do something unforgivable, which is uh, I start from the grass, which is an immediate exclusion penalty. Um, I was not that aware of how far across onto the grass I was. 
I mean, it's not marginal. The back wheels were fully on the grass. You know, can't argue with it. Um, my own mistake. Um, and I think, again, uh, wasn't quite concentrating as I should have been. Um, and I was more worried about where the traffic was coming to, to rejoin rather than, you know, I had time. I could have just jumped out of the car, pushed it a bit, jumped back in and still probably rejoined in the same place. Um, I did actually drive pretty well after this, uh, turned some reasonable laps, uh, caught a bunch of people up, um, but um, obviously I was excluded, I finished dead last, even behind people that didn't even compete in the final. So frustrating end to the day, but you know, all of my undoing, the, the overly aggressive move in heat nine. Uh, compromised my starting position in the finals. As I said I possibly could have finished fifth, 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 sixth in that heat, which potentially would have put me either front row or close to the front row of the C final, or maybe even towards the back end of the grid of the B final, um, which really for me would have been a good result. It's just, yeah, frustrating. But Looking for positives, I actually enjoyed ride, driving the revamp at Rye House. It's a really nice surface now. Uh, some of the reprofiled curbs are great, particularly the pylon, my nemesis, the pylon section. Um, the curbs are now completely flat, whereas they weren't before. Uh, they were quite, they weren't huge, but you know they weren't flat like this, where you can cut straight across them. And also the curb here going into the final corner, that's also been reprofiled. It's now completely flat, so you can just cut straight across it. Um, and the final corner as well, so definitely improved. I think on balance, I'd, I'd go back to Rye again for either sprints or sprint 60 or something similar. And the other positive is it's a good rehearsal for the fact I'm driving uh, sprints at Landau, um, another track. I actually, you know, I decided to go back to Landau because I really enjoyed driving there. Um, the experience championship doesn't go there, so sprints was the only option I had open to me. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. And at least this has given me an introduction, reminded me what driving in sprints is like. I've got some targets now, which I think are realistic. I just need to execute well and not make mistakes. Um, but thank you for watching. Until next time. Um, yeah. See you on track.